Well, since I didn't have the bright idea of actually using the video camera when I first started doing the boat, uh, I'm going to kind of recap you guys everything that I've done up till this point. Um, hopefully going through everything, if I can remember um, uh, everything that I did, and there's a lot. Uh, and I realize that there's a lot of ways to do this. This is just the way I did it. Um, feel free to chime in and let me know kind of different ideas and such, but I've had a lot of requests, uh, real detailed questions, and to be honest with you, I can't type to save my life, and I'd much rather just tell you guys on a video so that way you can kind of see what I did. So anyway, I'll start with the obvious, which was removing the outdrive first. Um, I read somewhere that you needed to uh, actually keep the outdrive stored in an upright position. And um, actually this outdrive used to be my, or the, I'm sorry, the, the, the piece of wood there used to hold up my old toolbox, which is over there. Um, and I bought a new bottom and this thing just was perfect. <laughs> my dad and I were taking the outdrive off one afternoon and he goes, hey, look there. Let's put it on there so it fit perfectly. So I took it off and uh, as Keith was saying, there's six outdrive bolts on the, well, there's three on either side. And um, like he said, you need to make sure and put the shifter in full forward. Uh, what that does is on the very bottom of this, it actually puts this piece right here in the middle position on the gimbal housing, which is right there and on this so it makes it for easy putting it on and off if you don't do that then you can't um it, it'll basically it won't shift properly um so with that being said i took off the gimbal housing in the back and the transom plate which is now up on the back of the boat and this also has six bolts actually it's eight bolts there's six that go through the hole actually the wood parts which is the bottom ones right here and right here. These actually come through from the gimbal itself. These two go through as a part of the opening through the hole and attaches the top part of the, that gimbal. So what I did is I took that out and then that left me with kind of that, but in a whole lot worse shape. So let me get in the boat here. So what I did after that is I started to uh, basically took my Dremel tool because the way that Glastron built this is they only skinned up to about right here all the way across. So from the, the base of the, the boat up was about six inches. And I think what happened uh, is that the water got around the back of that and that's how it rotted out the, the transom. Plus, someone also asked about my ski mounts. These four deals there are how the ski ladder mounts to the back of the boat. Those two were perfectly fine. These two were nothing but sawdust. Uh, because when I bought the boat, there was no ski ladder on it and there were holes back there. So I don't know how long that had been that way, but water had got in and I guess probably also you know, seeped around and helped rot out the transom also. But removing the transom is uh, no easy task. Um, the bottom part came out pretty easily with just, you know, um, hammers and chisels and stuff like that. And it got pretty simple when it got to about right here, it's where the good wood started. And that was tough. That took me about seven hours with a hammer and a chisel, very lightly tapping everything out just little by little. And, um, it worked out, it worked out, but it took a whole lot of time. And as you can see, my transom does not go all the way across. It actually stops and goes around behind here uh, and attaches to the tunnel. So by getting that out, I had a nice skin and then I took my belt sander with 40 grit and I sanded all over this thing to get it completely nice and flat for the new, new transom. Another thing really to kind of check for is stringer rot. Um, this boat was really taken care of uh, by the previous owner. I think the only reason why the transom uh, was rotted was because the fact that uh, water was intruding through the broken seal in the transom and the, the ladder. So what it was doing is it was actually hiding behind the, um, the little skin portion right there. So it in turn ran up this stringer, the bottom portion of it, about like that, 
up to almost this motor mount. So what I did is I completely cut it out. This stringer, not so much. It didn't do it. It was perfectly fine. So I basically just cut the skin off of it and then uh, uh, put a new piece. This part of the floor back here was rotten, probably about two, two square inches. So I just went ahead and replaced about a foot out of it just to make sure. Same thing on that side, just so I could get to both sides of the, the stringer. I just cut out the floor. And I cut the floor at, uh, I'm sorry, the deck at an angle, probably 45 degrees. So that way when you put the patch in there, it doesn't fall through. You don't have to worry about putting in nails or anything that's gonna rust after a certain amount of time. Uh, and then I PL glued that in. And then of course, you know, did the, the, uh, the fiberglass on top of that. So uh, once I'd cut all of that out, uh, I cleaned everything up, you know, really nicely. Um, and as far as building the transom, I used um, two pieces of three quarter inch oak uh, exterior grade. It has to be with exterior grade glue from what I understand. And that's what I did. It cost more. I think I got the, uh, the plywood at my local supplier. It wasn't Lowe's or Home Depot. And it cost me, uh, I want to say, 45 or 50 bucks. But um, it turned out real nice because it didn't have any knots in it. It didn't have any low spots or anything that I had to fill in. So I put two pieces of it together um, to equal, you know, this, this thickness right here. Um, and then what I did to glue it together is I took my PL glue, which um, I used uh, probably two tubes of it on this whole part of the transom. And imagine just going back and forth with the PL glue all the way across. Now I had not cut the hole out and I took a little notch trowel and I will get that and show you. All right, this is a notch trowel. Um, you use it to put down uh, thin layers of uh, mortar and you can see that's what I've done with it for a lot uh, for tile. Uh, what it does is when you have the PL or whatever on the, on the uh, surface, you just drag this across very lightly and or actually put down a lot of pressure and then what that does is it creates ridges in that PL and then when you put the two pieces together so imagine this is the one piece and this is the other when you put them together and you move them together like that to and then clamp them that gives you much more surface area for your glue to grab hold of so once I had done that I parked my truck on top of it to um, to completely guarantee that it was going to get a good nice bond uh, once it dried i completely sanded down the whole thing rounded off the edges and then i put a layer of and this is where we're going to get into fiberglass i put a layer of this six ounce uh roven or woven roven uh, it's not biaxial it's just standard um, but i encased the whole thing in that i actually did i'm sorry i took one i took two uh, layers of the resin, which is a standard epoxy resin. Uh, I got it at West Marine. Um, and I basically put two layers of that down first to kind of seal the wood. And then I put one layer of this and then wet it out around the edges and everything. Uh, once that was done, I let it dry. Um, I did the peel glue and the notch trowel technique again on the outer skin of the boat. So therefore, um, once I notched our well, okay, back up a little bit. I had to cut the hole out first. So what I did is I test fit the, uh, the transom into the boat and I traced out that inner hole. And then I cut it out with my jigsaw, which was, I think I burned the jigsaw up. It's, uh, it's not working like it used to, but uh, I cut the hole out. And then you see the two little looks like ears on the top of the uh, transom hole. Um, those are for the steering arm that goes back and forth um, to make the outdrive go back. And if you don't cut those out, it doesn't get its full range of movement. And the way I did that, as I read in the, I've got the original Mercruiser installation manual, and it said to use an inch and three quarters hole saw at a 60 degree angle to cut in those particular areas. And I tell you, it came out perfect. It looks, I was looking at the old pictures and it looks identical. So now we are back to the holes cut out, got the PL glue, stabbed it in there, clamped it down, left it for four solid days. Um, made sure it was nice and perfect, um, left it for a, a good solid four days.